Recently, the migratory subspecies of the monarch butterfly was listed as endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, better known as the IUCN, on their red list of threatened species. Reports began to pop up almost instantly in the media about this endangered listing, but what does it really mean? I'm Anthony with Backyard Ecology, and today I'm going to discuss what the IUCN listing of the migratory subspecies of the monarch butterfly means legally, conservation-wise, and overall. In order to fully understand what this listing means, first we have to start with what exactly is the IUCN. The IUCN is a global network of government agencies, non-government organizations, leaders of indigenous peoples, universities, research institutes, and businesses. The IUCN is known as a worldwide authority on the conservation status of species. The thing they are most known for is their red list of threatened species, which is exactly what it sounds like, a way to classify the conservation status of species worldwide. This list includes both plants and animals and has nine levels that range from not evaluated to extinct. The placement of a species on this list does not give the species any legal protection as the IUCN has no regulatory control. That is up to governmental entities to employ and enforce. While the IUCN does not have the power to implement or enforce laws or regulations, their data and findings are highly regarded worldwide by researchers, governmental groups, conservation groups, and are often used to help craft regulations, conservation practice plans, and research projects. If you are finding the information in this video useful, please pollinate that like button and subscribe to Backyard Ecology. The IUCN, along with its partner groups, have found that the migratory subspecies of monarch butterfly has been in steep decline for several decades and is in danger of going extinct for three main causes. The first of these causes is both legal and illegal logging of the wintering grounds along the California coast and in the Oyamel forest of Michoacan, Mexico. Secondly, climate change, which is throwing off the timing of both the spring and fall migrations. And finally, increased pesticide use, which has been hard on insects globally. The listing by the IUCN does not include the non-migratory subspecies of the monarch butterfly, which is found in Florida, parts of Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean islands, and Northern South America. So while the IUCN listing covers the monarch butterfly most people see in the U.S., it does not include the entire species. Interestingly, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service reviewed the monarch for listing as an endangered species under the Endangered Species Act, the ESA, in December of 2020. They found that as an entire species, the monarch met the requirements for being listed as threatened or endangered. So why isn't the monarch listed under the ESA? The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service precluded the monarch from listing at that time due to more pressing matters with other species. This will be brought up for review every year and the monarch will be listed when it is deemed warranted. While a listing would have been good in some ways, it would have given the monarch full protection under the ESA, which would have meant it would have had full legal protection as far as species are protected under that act. Uh, it would have also opened up federal funding to help uh, protect it and for conservation efforts. And while those are all good things, I do think the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service made the right decision at that time. If it is ever listed under the ESA, I will make another video, probably a series of videos, because there's going to be lots to discuss, because a lot of things are going to change if the monarch is protected under the Endangered Species Act. So, overall, the IUCN listing of the migratory subspecies of the monarch butterfly as endangered on their red list has no legal status or regulatory power. It does, however, bring more attention to the plight of the monarch butterfly and will hopefully help conservation organizations and governmental organizations to further continue their conservation efforts and maybe help condense them and solidify them into a uh, joint effort between nations in saving this awesome butterfly. If you would like to learn more about some cool, awesome native butterflies, check out this video and be sure to subscribe to Backyard Ecology and get out and explore nature in your backyard.